Hey y'all, this is Joe out here at the cabin at St. Bernard Acres. I'm going to try to run some electric uh, through the cabin. This part is going to be hooking up my generator to the service panel. So I can just come out here, plug my generator into an outlet, you know, receptacle on the outside wall, just plug it in, and come in here and flip the breaker on and have power throughout the cabin. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this is just a cabin. This is a weekend thing. It's not going to be our permanent home. We're not going to live here forever. Um, so I'm, I'm not having to set all this up like, you know, it would be our house. Um, it's just, like I said, it's a weekend thing. The only time I'm really going to need enough power to where I'll have to use a generator is when I want to run the air conditioner. Other than that, pretty much everything else is going to run off of solar. So, this will be set up, and eventually, after, you know, I get my solar all set up, I'll have a, a charge controller that I can set up here also. If my battery bank is low, I can run the generator, have the electric in the cabin, and charge my battery bank at the same time. So let me try to get this going for you. Now a disclaimer. I am not an electrician. I've never been trained as an electrician and I don't work in the trade as an electrician. What I do do is read a lot. Do do. <laughs> I do read a lot. I research. I ask friends who are in the profession and I watch YouTube videos. Now the thing about YouTube videos, about 10% of them I will learn from and pay attention to. Because I think about 90% of them are people like me, you know, and there are a lot of people out there who try to tell you how to do something and they really don't know. All I'm doing is showing you how I'm going to hook this up and hopefully it will work for me. Uh, in, in your permanent home, I don't know. Don't go by what I say. I'm going to do this the way it fits me. I may use the wrong terminology. I may say something, call something wrong. That's all right. I know what I, I, I want to accomplish here. And I think I'll be able to do it. And if not, I'll burn this down and I'll build a new one. <laughs> I'm only kidding. But, uh... Let me get this plane in here, what I want to do, and then we'll come back and I'll show you, you know, it's all finished. So what I have here is this plug that will go in the wall so that with my generator sitting outside, I can plug it in to the cabin because it has a 30 amp plug on the generator and I got a twist lock I was going to make an extension cord with the twist locks on a 30 amp cord to go from the generator to this box but it's just easy to buy one and not any you know, there's no real big savings by the time you buy the 10 gauge wire and the L5 ends to make it you can buy a 25 foot cord um, so that's what is going to go from the generator to this box, which this will be on the outside of the cabin. This will be on the inside with my 10 gauge wiring running from this up to my service panel. So let me show you how this box goes in and how I'm going to wire it and get it up to my service panel. But this is just to plug my generator into it, so I'm not bringing extension cords through the window or anything like that. So I'll be back. So now I'm outside. I'm back here with my receptacle. As you can see, this is where my generator is going to plug into. I brought the wires out. They're stripped. I stripped them about a quarter of an inch back. Now the hot and the neutral. And again, three wires in this 
Um, this is indoor wiring. The black is hot, the white is neutral, the bare is ground. On the back of this receptacle, I have three holes. If I can get this centered, you will see a white one, a green one, and a black one. All we have to do is match those up. So, I'm going to, these screws on the side, I'm going to loosen them all up, all the way open. These really are quite easy to hook up. So I'm going to take my wires now and so these are stripped back the hot and the neutral about a quarter of an inch maybe a little bit more because they're going to set down in these holes and slide in where that screw you don't want the wire past the shoulder the insulation so I'm going to push all these in and start tightening them up. There we go. Now they're all hooked up finally. Man, that's hard. Now I can force them back through the wall again. <laughs> and that's where my box is going to reside. Boy, this stuff is so uncooperative. It's amazing. So let me see if I can get this screwed into place. Now we have a nice weather tight plug twist lock to run from my generator to this to get power into the house into the cabin. So now we'll go back inside and work on the wiring in there. Okay. This is a 100 amp service panel. All I needed for here was just a little sub panel, but this with breakers was pretty cheap. I think it was cheaper than the sub panel I found, so I bought this one instead. My generator is only a 4,000 watt, it's 4,000 starting watts and 3,500 watts, you know, running. 29.2 amps, that's what I get out of it. It's got an RV plug on a twist 30 amp plug. Now, the way this service panel, where it's a service panel, breaker box, fuse box, people call it different things. This is where my service is coming in from the outside. It's coming into this box. This box distributes the power to the various circuits that I have. Each area is on a circuit and is controlled by a circuit breaker. Um, my little living room here will be on a circuit. The bathroom and kitchen area is going to be on a separate circuit. The loft is going to be on a separate circuit. So this box takes the whole 30 amp, distributes it to the various circuits as I need it. That's the idea behind this. Now, I'm trying to explain this in simple common terms because that's all I know. 
Um, don't quote me on it. Don't even think for a second all of this stuff is going to be up to some kind of a code somewhere. <laughs> it's going to be safe and it's going to work for me. That's all that matters. And again, this is just a weekend cabin. This is not a yet a place where I have to live. So with that in mind, let me carry on. The way it works in your house, you have, you know, you could have 100 amp service or 200 amp service, uh, 240 volts. Remember, I've only got 120 volts coming in, but, you know, a service panel can handle 240 volts in your house. The reason why you have this side of the service panel and this side of the service panel. These do not connect anywhere. These are separate. And what your 240 volts coming in does, you have the two hots, the red and the black. You know, the neutral is going to go over here, the white one, the neutral, and the ground. Going to be grounded to the, the box. But you have two hots coming in. One leg is for this, you know, you got 240 volts coming in, 120 volts is going to go to this side, and 120 volts going to this side, because your house only uses 120 volts. Um, that's the way the house is designed. So you've got 120 here, 120 here, out of your 240 volts service. Does that make sense? Now, what I'm running is, I only have one leg. I don't have the two legs coming down. I've only got one. So there are two ways I could do this, really. I could bring my 120 volts in from my generator. And, okay, put my circuit breakers here. So that when I'm on my generator, this side is hot. This side is energized, and all my circuits, three circuits, will be over here. On this side, I could run my solar in and energize this part. But in order to do that, I would have to, everything that was in circuits over here, I would have to also have over here. I don't want to do that redundancy. I need to energize both sides of this. So that I only have one breaker for each circuit. I don't have to have two breakers per circuit. If, you know, by two breakers, I mean one for generator, one for solar. I want one breaker that will work for either one. So I have to have both of these sides energized off the generator or off my solar. How do I do that with a 120 volt system when I've only got one 120 volt system, you know, line coming in? What I'm going to use, excuse me, this is a breaker. This is a 30 amp double pole breaker. And if you see, dang if I could get it in the screen. Um, there's two places where it connects into this service panel versus a single pole breaker, which is this. It only has the one way to connect. And what happens is, if you go back to the service panel here, I put this breaker in. I'm going to use this side, say this was my generator side, my single pole breaker is going to go in here and connect like so. My hot wire will go in here, my ground and my neutral, but then, oh, you know, it's only going to use the one, the one side. There's nowhere is it connected to this one. Because I've got 120 volts coming in on this side. 
Now, this double pull breaker, you see when I put it in, it's going to connect to this side and to this side. So, I'm going to put that in. <laughs> now, I'm attached to both sides with the one double pull breaker. So now I've got my 120 volts coming into this. It's going to energize this side right here. Or when I bring the 120 volts in, if I put it into this breaker, this part of it, it will only energize this side. So what I've done, I've taken this double pole breaker. This is the side where the wires come in that will focus. And if I can get it in the camera. Um, I've got a jumper in there. And this little jumper will connect both of these. So now I'm going to have, instead of two wires coming in, as in 240, I've only got one wire coming in, I will put it in either one of these, and it will energize both of them because of that jumper. That's the workaround. So, again, I'm not a teacher, obviously. Uh, but, I wanted to make sense to you. I'm taking 120 volts and splitting it between both sides instead of having the luxury of 240 volts coming in to have 120 on each side I have to take the only 120 I have and jump it over to make it work for both sides. Now, that doesn't mean I'm only going to have 60 volts on each side. I'm going to have 120 volts still on each, each side. But I'm not going to use that much at one time. So that's how you can use the 120, bring in the one line, and activate both sides of your service panel. Now, I showed you where I put the plug in the wall down there. Ran the wire up to this service panel. I'm going to hook up this breaker now. This up. Now here's my wires for my incoming. This is coming from the plug I put in the wall, the receptacle that I can plug in, you know, my generator in from the outside into the wall. It comes up the wall into this. This is going to feed my service panel. So, first thing I'm going to do is put the ground and the neutral wire into this bus bar. Alright, so my neutral and my ground are in. Let's see if I can move this a little bit.
I've got my neutral on ground in this bus bar. And this is attached to the box, so the service panel. And outside I have a rod, a copper rod. Drove about six and a half feet into the ground. And a wire is going to come out of it, up the wall, and connect to this box. So that way it's grounded. That's why you have to be grounded. The neutral wire and the uh, ground wire can plug into any of these bus bars right here. So now I'm grounded. Let me see if I can get the... Uh, hot in here and into this breaker now this is going to be fun but there we go Not the prettiest, but it's going to work. Let me see if I can get you in here a little bit better and show you what I'm doing. That's my hot wire coming from the receptacle I put in the wall. So that's coming in to this breaker, which has a jumper on it from this breaker to this breaker. Everything's tight. So now, when I plug my generator in outside, all I have to do is walk in here, turn that on. Both sides of my service panel are energized, and I have power throughout the cabin. Now, I'm going to have another one. It's not going to be this. This is a 100 amp double pole breaker here, but I can demo with it. This is going to go... On this side, if I get that in there, <coughs> I'm going to have another 30 amp breaker on this side. And what will happen is I'll run my solar because this is a double pole breaker. This is a double pole breaker. This double pole is also connected to both sides. I'll run my solar panels from my inverter into this. And I'm going to devise some kind of a, a, a metal plate in here to go around these two so that only one can be, you only want one on at a time. You can't have both of them on at the same time. You're going to blow something up. But when this one is on, this one will be off. When I want to switch over to solar and just use my batteries, this one I'll turn off, this one I'll turn on, now my solar panel energizes everything and I have electric running through here. So that's how I'm going to set this up and be off grid. Solar power, generator is on, all my electrics running. And when I'm finished for the weekend, when I get ready to head home, I'll just kill the power I'll unplug my generator from outside and off I go that's the basics behind doing this if it makes sense to you I want to try to make it easy to understand so I might over explain some things I don't know I'll be redundant and not say the right terminology perhaps but that's how it works it's not hard um, it's not too difficult if you understand the concept you can do it if you're the tiny tiny bit least bit skeptical or nervous about do not even try this get somebody who understands electric to do it for you 
I understand enough. I know how it works so I can do this. I feel comfortable in being able to do this. So I can do it for myself. I would never go do it for anybody else. I'll experiment on myself. But that's how I'm hooking up my generator to my cabin right now. Next project is putting the solar panels up, getting the battery bank in here, and working on that side of it. So I hope this made sense. Uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Share it. Let people know it's not that difficult, but that's how I do it to be off-grid out here, but to have all the power that I need. And, I, you know, like anybody can do it. As long as you feel comfortable with it. This is not up to code. This is probably not the way an electrician would do it. This is just the way Joe does it. And Joe will have power in his cabin. Either way. <laughs> I don't have I don't have to worry about inspections or codes or anything out here because this is just like I've always said, a weekend cabin. It's seasonal is what they call it. So, as long as I feel comfortable inside it, I have it. But that's it. Um, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you learned something from it. And, like I said, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe, if, you know, as I continue building here in the cabin. And I'm starting to get excited about how it's coming together now. Appreciate y'all watching. Thank you. I'm out.